Hello my dear sewing friends, it's Elisa here with Thoughtful Creativity and you know what? Holiday gifts that you can sew is what I do every holiday season. It's almost like my specialty if I may say so. So this year is no different, but I actually have a few of these kind of videos planned and we're gonna start with this one, which is small but beautiful and useful things that you can sew for your friends and family that they will actually love receiving. And I have a full table here right in front of me of handmade gifts that I've been sewing for past week and a half and I'm ready to wrap them. And as I do that, I'll tell you everything you need to know about them, what are the DIY steps, where to get templates, if at all, and anything else that you might need to create something beautiful and useful for your friends and family. And you know what? Another really cool thing about this video particularly is that it's sponsored by Skillshare. And I can tell you this, I know that you will absolutely love Skillshare because I do, and I've actually been a paying member for going on almost a year now. And I love everything that they have to offer, and I do draw a lot of creative inspiration and creative knowledge from Skillshare. So there's gonna be a really cool offer coming up for you guys a little bit later in the video, so we'll talk about it later. And right now, let's get going. All right, let's kick off our list with this first one since I'm already holding this in my hands. And guess what it is? These are socks. And I know, I know it sounds so odd and unusual because when we talk about socks, you know, knitting comes to mind, buying socks comes to mind, but not sewing socks. And you know what? I made my first pair back in March or April, one of those, and these are actually comfortable. I know you were going to ask about it, so yes, these are actually comfortable. I was a little bit skeptical at first as well, but then you know what? Who does not need socks in their life or an extra pair of socks? And my wise Russian grandma comes to mind. She always used to say and continues to say that naski trusi in the savoy platki, which means socks, undies, and handkerchiefs. Well, the last one is kind of obsolete from our lives right now, but she always used to say that, you know, these three are like, you know, gifts that you cannot go wrong with because everybody needs one. And these are also absolutely amazing when we talk about personalizing because there's so many gimmicky fabrics out there that you can use for some really cool personalized socks or maybe you can print your own fabric or you can use your fabric scraps as well. So this is like a win, 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 all around, which is really cool. Now, when it comes to sewing socks, you need a pattern, and the pattern is a free sewing pattern by Ellie and Mac. Now, it comes with instructions, and I also do have a tutorial video on these. So pretty much, you just need to cut out the pattern pieces, you need to make sure that your fabric is stretchy, and then you sew them together according to instructions. And after that, one of the most important parts, in my opinion, is the presentation. So what you need to do is, once your socks are ready, you need to get like a piece of cardstock and then you cut it to the shape, and you can use your sewing pattern for that as well. You need to cut it to the shape of the front part. Then you insert it really nicely, and I also put a little uh, hot chocolate pouch in there, or maybe some candy as well, and then you wrap it around with a beautiful ribbon. And that's it, your gift is ready to go, and you can make so many so quickly, and this is going to be a very useful gift to give to anybody on your list. This next project takes about 30 minutes to make, about one yard of your fabric, and it's super useful, super practical, and can be customized in so many different ways. You just kind of have to look beyond what you see at first sight, and also beyond what you see on a surface, and then you just let your imagination run wild, and then you can create some beautiful gifts for pretty much anybody on your list. And yes, I am talking about an apron, and hear me out over here, hear me out. If you have somebody who loves soap making or candle making or art, artist mock, or maybe you have kids or nieces or grandkids who love to play with Play-Doh or play outside or do whatever else. Like for example, my husband, he has 30 chickens and he likes gardening and things like that. I can make a, a, an apron for him, just you know, out of sturdy material and something really fun with a lot of pockets for tools or things like that. So you can really customize it for everybody on your list. And this particular one is actually traveling across the ocean as we speak to my wise Russian grandmother, that's exactly right. She does love to bake and she likes to do things in her garden, so she can use it for either or. And I did pair it together with this little pouch where she can keep her you know, chapstick and maybe cream for her hands and things like that. So 
aren't many ways that I could really pack it or add more things to it because I wanted to keep it pretty light on the weight. And also there are so many restrictions, you know, um, of sending packages, you know, cross country. So I just really try to keep it minimal to make sure that it actually gets to the destination. But yes, an apron is a beautiful thing to make and there's a full tutorial. I will leave it in the info box below. Again, it takes about 30 minutes and you'll be done with a beautiful handmade gift. Speaking of mini pouches, I present you a mini wallet that has been made out of cork fabric, but you can also make it out of leather, faux leather, vinyl, regular fabric, so many possibilities. The most important part, it's very useful and it's very cute too, and it comes together so easily. This is a no-sew version. This is a sewing version. It has a closure. Boop. This one also has a closure, but it's just made out of the same material that we've used for the wallet itself. And at first I had this idea to create a pouch like this for my travel documents, a passport and all the necessary things, because you know what it is, you know, when you travel, this is the last thing that you want for all your documents to be all over. So you want a nice place where to hold them all together. And then I thought, you know what, if I make it smaller, this could be a very useful jewelry case, a tea wallet, a place where to store your little box of watercolors and a few brushes. This could be so many, many things. And this particular one, I'm going to put a little cocoa pouch inside and then my husband actually made some really beautiful handmade bracelets. I'm gonna put, gonna put one of those inside as well and then add a little tag. And that's it, the gift is ready to go. And you can make so many of these. They come together in like 10 minutes or so. Great for scrap busting, just like I mentioned, and a very useful project to begin with. So if you have a huge team at work or maybe a lot of kids, mm, this could be so cool. And I know you guys made a little fun of me because I got so excited about these Velcro dots. These are really, really useful for this project. I kid you not, I was so surprised. So if you are making these, these are a must. I will leave all the links for the tutorial and for these dots in the info box below. And if you are a member, you do get a template for free. If you're not, you can draft your own. It's really easy, you will be surprised. So, yep, another thing is a mini wallet. Come here, darling. There we go, come here, there we go. All right, so I present you our next project on our gift list, and that is a scarf. Ta-da! And the cool thing about it, it's a no-sew, and then you can create it in so many different prints, so many different colors, because just the selection of fleece, which is what we're going to use for this project, is just mind-blowing. There's so many cool prints out there. This one I got at Hobby Lobby, but if I were you, I would go to Drian's. They have a bigger selection. And basically, it's a very similar concept to a no-sew blanket that I did a little bit earlier this month, and I gifted that to my sister-in-law, which she loved. The idea is very similar. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take two yards of fabric and then you're going to cut it very nicely, very evenly. Let me tell you how wide you're gonna cut it. So mine is just about 10 inches, I believe. Yep, that's about right, 10 inches. So if your fleece is 36 inches wide, for example, then you can make about three scarves out of it. If it's, if it's even wider, then even more scarves about it, all in one go, because this is really quick. Then you cut all your strips, which are going to become your scarves, and after that, you want to make the fringe, and then you just make the fringe. Each of these little fringes is about four inches long, and then that's it, you're done. You can have it if you'd like to, but I didn't because fleece does not fray, which makes it perfect for this project, and you can make it for kids, for adults, for anybody on your list, really. Such a versatile, quick project, and bam, you're done. Now this next project on my sewing list might seem a little odd to you because obviously I'm holding a set of greeting cards and you might ask me, Elisa, uh, where's sewing? And you know what? I did sew these and look, hear me out. <laughs> I've been sewing greeting cards for years now and there's something so unique and special about that little stitched border that gets people going ooh and ah every time they receive one of these from me. Seriously, I don't know what it is about it, but they're amazed every time. And there's two ways that you can make these. Number one, as an actual greeting card, or as a stationary set for them. And oh, there's also two types of materials that you can use for these. You can either use illustrations, and these, these particular ones have been made with uh, drum roll, old gift bags. 
yes, my mom gave me some gifts last uh, Christmas maybe, and the, the gift bags were so beautiful. I had no heart to part with them, and I decided to cut these apart and make these into these beautiful greeting cards. And another thing that you can use for these is your artwork or fabric, beautiful fabric like lace or sequins, or maybe something with a beautiful image on it. Oh, it makes for a beautiful and unique greeting card if you use some fabric on it. So today, these I've made some time ago, and I'm actually gonna use these just to sign for people for this holiday season. But I also wanted to make a set of greeting cards to give as a gift. So I'm going to create a set of beautiful watercolor cards. And I'm sure that you guys know that everything and anything watercolor -y right now is really on trend. So anybody's going to be happy to receive some beautiful watercolor cards. And I have a few watercolor paintings over there that have been there for a while. And they're just there to be pretty. So I think it's time to put them to some good use. So I'm gonna grab these three over here. And you know what? I'm not a Bob Ross, but I should tell you that I'm really happy with these and I think these are going to look really beautiful as greeting cards. And here's a little secret. I have actually made these by following and learning from a Skillshare class. Yep, and actually quite a few of the other ones over there on that board uh, I made by using Skillshare class. So let me tell you a little bit about Skillshare before we move forward with making these into greeting cards because they are a sponsor of today's video. So thank you so much, Skillshare. And basically for me personally, that's a beautiful creative outlet where I get to learn a new skill like watercolors or making coloring pages. Do you guys remember a few months back, I made this as a free download for all of you guys to color and put in as a beautiful poster in your sewing rooms. Yeah, <laughs> that's where I learned how to make these on Skillshare. And there are a lot of classes on Skillshare for sewing too, just so you know. But for me, fine art is where I find my peace and kind of, you know, I get some time to center myself, learn a new skill, paint something beautiful. And really it is an online learning community of thousands of classes for curious people like you and I, where you can either you know find a new hobby like I did, or maybe deepen your knowledge in an existing one, and just you know learn a new skill, experience creativity, and create something beautiful as well. There's a lot of different classes like um, photography and lifestyle, fine art. That's where I find my watercolor tutorials. And the thing that I personally appreciate the most, and I'm sure that you will do as well is that Skillshare really is centered around learning. So there's no ads, really. So it's all about learning experience and learning something new. So that way, every time you come back, there is something interesting to deepen your knowledge. And I also love the fact that in a lot of the classes, there is a downloadable material, like an instruction sheet or a worksheet or something like that. So as you go along the class, you also have some material to guide you through that and do some extra exercises on the topic. So it's really, really useful. Like I took a leadership class some time ago and I had like a worksheet next to it um, to fill out and and then you, you, you file it you know, for your own personal reference for future. So there's a lot of useful things on there and a really awesome offer for you guys. So the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will actually get a free trial of premium membership so that you can explore your creativity. And if you choose to continue subscribing to Skillshare Forward like I did, it actually costs less than $10 per month if you do the annual subscription. So it's totally worth it, I'm telling you. I've learned so many things and it does give me an extra creative outlet. Oh, and right now I'm actually taking a class from Rachel Golota and Daniel Inski. And um, I hope I'm not butchering their names. They're actually a fellow YouTubers and I've been watching their channel for a while. And their channel is Mango Street. And I say that they're fellow YouTubers, like I know them. I don't. Their channel is like a hundred times, if not more, bigger than mine. But I do watch them, so it almost feels like I know them. So I'm taking their class DIY product photography and how to style and shoot creative stills. Because you know what? With running a YouTube channel, I definitely need some help with photography. So the biggest takeaway from the class so far is that follow your creativity and don't get focused on the latest gadgets and cameras. Just, you know, do do your best and apply your creative energy. So hopefully after the class, I'll feel very brave in taking some new beautiful photos of the things that I sew. And right now, let's get back to creating our watercolor cards. 
So for your greeting cards, what you're going to need is some cardstock. You're gonna fold it in half and then you're gonna cut it to size. And the same thing you're going to do with your artwork or whatever else you're using for your greeting cards. And after that, I want you to take a needle that you know that you won't use for any other project. So we need a nice thick needle that is just about at the end of its life. Because after you use your needle on cardstock, that's it, it's done. And then usually I use some embroidery thread just because it's nice and shiny, but you don't have to. You can use whatever thread that you have. And to make it a little bit easier, I apply a little dot of glue in the middle of my artwork and then I secure it on my cardstock so that way it doesn't move anywhere. And then I start stitching. And I don't do the back stitch obviously because I'm just gonna pull the threads through to the other side and tie them into a little knot. And after that, you can just place them in a beautiful little bag, add a little note or a little tag, and your gift is ready to go. And I'm telling you, everybody is going to love it because who does not love a beautiful greeting card that will cheer somebody else's day? Now this next gift on our sewing list is super tried and true for years now. And you know what? Every year there's still somebody who is requesting a zipper pouch and every year they're super happy about it because this is also such a versatile thing. And it kind of seems that this and this is very similar, but this one is a little bit more secure because of the zipper. And also of course a little bit bigger, although this one you can make any size, but zipper pouches have been really popular. And as I said, I've been making this for years for my colleagues, for my friends, for my family, family and everybody absolutely love these. So to make one of these, you'll need just four pieces of fabric, two for the outside, two for the inside, and interfacing. It's optional, however, if you want to make one that's sturdy as mine, you can see how sturdy it is, then interfacing definitely is a must. And a zipper, of course. And to not to confuse you right now, I will leave a link for a tutorial in the description below. But basically, you're just going to sandwich the fabric with a zipper, and then you're going to sew it. And then, of course, I add this little really cool keychain over here so that way you know it adds a finishing touch to your zipper pouch and yeah make it for kids friends family men women um, make it as a travel bag make it as a art kit make it as whatever you would like as I said it's tried and true guaranteed that was a lot of sewing, a lot of talking, a lot of DIYing, and a lot of gift wrapping as well. So I truly hope that you got some inspiration, that you got some creative juices flowing, and that you will make something beautiful for your friends and family this holiday season as well. So do let me know, what are you sewing for your loved ones? What kind of useful things, sentimental things, whatever it is, let me know in the comments below. And until next time, happy sewing, and I hope to see you in the next video, guys. Bye.